that means my job has to change. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of times, I think it's very hard as a business owner to realize that your job has to change. If you're, if you are, you know, heading in the direction that you want to, which is success, you shouldn't be doing the same job you're doing in year one that you're doing in year five. And then, you know, and it changes, but that's, you know, it's hard because my, I'm sure my team is like, can you, we, we know how to do this. Could you leave us alone? Do you mind? Um, can you back off? Um, <laughs> aren't you supposed to be getting us more business? And I'm like, Oh, I, I am. I'll be back. Um, so I think that was the most, um, interesting thing because the actual work of what we do, mm -hmm. uh, tools, tactics, et cetera, like, I, you know, that stuff I know in my sleep, um, but running a business around it in my own business and what kind of business do I want and how do I define success? And it's really, <clears throat> it's, you know, that inside out stuff. I'm Jamie O'Kane, CPA, small business advanced tax planning and compliance extraordinaire. And this is the Abundant Beans Podcast, the podcast that takes my love for learning what makes people tick while digging into the good, bad, and ugly of small business ownership. We strive to give you the insight that only those in the trenches of being and working with entrepreneurs can provide. How many contracts do you need before you start a business? And I was like, how, how many do you need? I don't know. And, and then someone else called and said, Hey, your name keeps coming up. We need somebody to run a nationwide bus tour on helping us not repeal the affordable care act. Mm -hmm. Uh, do you, are you interested? And I was like, Oh yeah, you can hire, you can hire my firm. And they're like, Oh great. Send us your contract. And I was like, contracts, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and then the Hayes initiative. And here we are it. chatting today. Well, wow. so, I just, it's so funny because a lot of us start businesses. We're like, Oh, maybe we can just. Maybe I can yeah. just do this on my own. Well, I hadn't, I mean, you know, I was super lucky uh, considering when the campaign ended that, you know, I was having these conversations in November, the same, the same month that the campaign ended. So mm -hmm. I just wasn't in the headspace. I hadn't been in my apartment for a year and a half. I hadn't slept in a year and a half. And no, I, I just wasn't in the headspace to really be thinking about it, but I'd always wanted to, but I just wasn't there. And, and gratefully, you know, this is why friends uh, who love us and support us are so great because I just realized sort of pushed me in that direction. It was the best thing. So, mm -hmm. I mean, friends who pushed me is the reason we're here and doing a podcast. Yeah. 100. Well, great. So, so many reasons we're together today. So many reasons. <laughs> and it all goes uh, back to that very popular show in the 90s. I'm kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> So when it comes to crisis communication, what top pieces of advice would you give someone who finds themselves in hot water? I guess we could talk about the J&J. &J. <laughs> like a place for that. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. So ultimately, you know, the first thing is, I think most of all is to get your house in order, right? Mm -hmm. So before you put anybody out or put a statement out, and I think it's, it's a really fine line because I think speed is of the essence. Mm -hmm. I think making sure that people understand and acknowledge um, that they're that they're, they're that they are aware there's a crisis and that they are, they're aware that people are expecting an answer on a certain topic, um, but that doesn't mean that you have to sort of go out immediately and speak to reporters. Um, and in fact, what you would really want to do is get everybody in the room, your crisis team, and really as quickly as possible, understand where you actually are, understand, you know, is, are there other shoes that are going to drop? Um, and then start to figure out how to, how to like clean that up and start to make it clear that you're in control, mm -hmm. that you know, where you're headed. Um, you know, this is how we're dealing with this crisis. You know, it's important that all of our customers understand that, uh, nothing's going to be affected while we do this. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, this is because it's, or it could be legal. And just quite frankly, if it's, if it's a legal problem, you are going to be pretty limited in what you can talk about because you're not going to want to impact any cases. So, yeah. um, but the first thing is, is to get your house in order, but, but, you know, it's a rock and a hard place because you want to take your time to respond, but you can't take too much time because then you look like you are asleep at the wheel. So it's a really, really hard, you know, eye of the needle kind of, you know, timing. That's so. really interesting. And I didn't really think about that until you just said that, but like, if something goes sideways, there's always like this time where everybody's just like, it's when it's not, it's not if something, it's not if something goes sideways, it's well, when. when something goes sideways, <laughs> which we're always reminding people that it's, you know, everybody likes to, 
listen, I, we've worked with a lot of people who've been out there holding their breath, crossing their fingers, hoping for the best. It is not a strategy. Like part of what we do is we help people have a strategy so that when something goes wrong, Mm -hmm. you know, you've already gamed out as many scenarios of what could go wrong in your perspective field. And you now know how to handle that. But yeah, you have a window of time where everybody's like staring at you going, hello, when are you going to? Are you going to say something about this thing? You understand what your CEO just said, right? You got to clean that up. Um, so what have been some of your um, the greatest successes of Hayes Initiative? Well, we're here. <laughs> we're surviving. We're alive. Um, yeah, I would say... Um, I, I think, you know, we've had it, listen, we recently got through um, PR week, had their 2021 awards for the United States. And we got um, for best in public affairs, got an honorable mention with our work with the times up that That's we've done. Awesome. And so we were like super proud of that. Congratulations. Um, thanks. Yeah. We were, I mean, it's been really, um, I, I would say it's a lot of the meaningful stuff like that. We have like a ton of work, everything that we do, we're super proud of, but there's just certain things that sort of stick out. And obviously I think time's up is one, you know, when COVID hit in 2020, we, <clears throat> you know, I, I, I would say one of my big successes, at least for me is that, you know, I was very able to articulate to the team, like, look, I don't, you know, we have a surplus for a while. I can't, no one can describe or discuss what's happening. So we're going to take it day by day as a team and sort of see where we are. We're going to make mm-hmm. sure our clients are helped. And, you know, I still think that we're poised for growth, um, even though this is happening and I don't want to abandon that plan. And we really didn't. And it proved correct that, you know, naturally in the middle of a global pandemic and a, ma- a major world crisis, you know, people with our skill sets, communications and government relations were in high demand. And all that work that we had done, you know, building relationships and doing things with uh, prospective clients and current clients, it really paid off. Um, And we were able to not only keep all of our clients throughout the pandemic, but we were able to grow during the pandemic. Um, And that also gave us the ability to do pro bono work very early in the pandemic with uh, small businesses, in particular restaurants in New York Mm -hmm. City, which we felt really, I think a lot of us felt pretty passionate about that because I, you know, like everybody, when you rewind it to a year ago, everybody wanted to help. Um, And I think, you know, we're advising to our clients to say, you know, listen, you're not a doctor. So stop thinking that as, you know, uh, just to use the, we have a major league soccer uh, team, New York City Football Club, who we love to death and they're a great client. But, you know, they were, they wanted to, they wanted to help really in an authentic way. I was like, look, you're not a doctor. And so like, you should do what you do well and like reach out to your fans, talk to your fans, make sure they have access to, you know, all of the information that's coming out, you know, and they put together and the club put together some really incredible stuff that helped parents engage their kids while they were home, helped people stay healthy at home. You know, some of the players came out and put together these workout videos for people that you can do at home. So it was really about sort of saying, stay true to who you are Mm -hmm. in this current moment versus Mm -hmm. trying to, you know, in your want to do something, do something completely different than what you deliver to the people who love you and trust you. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we needed to take some of our own advice because the best way we could help is, you know, to give people who couldn't afford our services, give them those services because they really needed them and helping people, which we were talking a little bit before the show started around um, creating coalitions in particular the restaurant coalitions that got created wow. in New York city so that they could go to elected officials um, helping them just make sure they have access to all of the, you know, PPP um, mm-hmm you know, portals and different uh, tool sets and all of these things. Like we really tried to put, just put as much good information out into the world as it was changing rapidly. So I think, I think that in particular, I think last year in particular feels really like, it feels like a a huge success story. It's funny now. I haven't really thought about it until we were talking about it the second. And it's, it's really, I think we did some good stuff last year. So Mm -hmm. that was super swanky and fun. And so got to work with a bunch of celebs uh, one of them being um, David Schwimmer at the time. Friends was hot, the mm-hmm. hottest show on TV. Um, and Rachel worked at, at Ralph Lauren. And so David said, I'm going to 
put you in contact with the wardrobe department at Warner Brothers. And I was like, that sounds great, David. And then, you know, Warner Brothers called this woman. Oh God, what was her name? I can't remember her name, but she called and she's like, hey, David loves working with you and we need clothes for the store. And so I'm just going to give you the credit card and you can just send us stuff and what we keep, we keep, and then we'll send it back to you. And I'm like, okay, so now... So just sort of, you know, in my early career, I just said yes to everything. Mm -hmm. And so, and I just enjoyed it and I was having so much fun. And um, which is my advice often to young people now is like, just say yes to it and like be a worker and be happy to be there. And, you know, no job too small kind of idea. And Mm -hmm. that turned into really doing lots of fun PR event stuff for the stores. And then I worked for Donna Karen and started volunteering for the human rights campaign, which is uh, the nation's largest LGBTQ advocacy organization and ended up, I guess that's really when I sort of decided what I wanted to do when I grew up. And that was probably like in my mid twenties and went back to school here at the new school, finished and got my political science degree, got hired by the human rights campaign to run their electoral campaign in 2008. Um, And that's where I really got kicked off into sort of messaging, political campaigns, uh, field work, and just sort of understanding the combination of like truly public affairs where you have the comms and the government relations and the community. I think, I think that's very true. I think a lot of us start our business thinking, oh, I'm just going to like replace my job, right? Or just going to replace whatever. And that's how we usually start out. But then we get to this point where we're like, but we want more. We don't want to just be technicians, which means yep. we have to give up stuff. Um, yeah. And that is hard. It's so hard, especially I think a lot of business owners are pretty type A and we're all pretty controlling and we want stuff done a certain way. Well, um, we've gotten to a point where the type A has, you know, look, it's brought us success, right? Mm-hmm. So being the, t- being the tactician and being the one who delivers everything, it's led us to here. And mm-hmm. so that's, you know, it's hard to, you know, in, in many areas of your life, both professionally and personally, you know, to give up the tools that have served you well so far, but in order to keep growing, you know, it's all this like, you know, namaste, namaste. Like that's how you have to, you know, inside out. I really am a big believer in that where you have to keep growing, but it has to change. Yeah. Um, I, and I don't know if, if you find this, but like when we start a business, especially under our names, yours is under your name, mine was for the longest time. We're still in the process of moving it over. People really only like a lot of our clients, really kind of push back on having anybody else talk to them. Like they expect me to answer like every single question. Totally. Um, and it's like, we have other people here that can, and you're going to get a faster answer probably too. Right. Yep. yep. Um, and they know your stuff because they've been in it. I can go find the answer, but ask the person who does the thing. Don't, you know, constantly coming to me is not going to get you anywhere really. Well, and that's also like part of what changing my job was too, is that, you know, I had to make it clear to the clients of like, look, day to day, you know, Mm -hmm. you're going to be serviced by this account lead Mm -hmm. and they have so many years of experience. They're in the weeds on your stuff every single day. And I, and, you know, part of what you're coming to us for is both the tactical part of it in the day-to-day, but you're also coming for strategy. And so there's a difference in, is this a day-to-day question? You know, so it's a little bit of like training how we work, Mm -hmm. Uh, but you know, it's not easy because, you know, at the end of the day, if my clients want to talk to me, they're going to talk to me and I'm of course here and we'll figure it out. But you know, it just sort of is what it is. Thank you so much for listening or watching. Be sure to subscribe on YouTube, iTunes, or wherever you prefer to listen. If you learned something and found some useful information to apply to your business today, please consider giving us a thumbs up and a review. Until next week, be abundant.